as an of the nation's total wealth goes to the top. It is no wonder that an of that wealth is corrupting U.S. politics. More than 14 billion went to federal candidates, party committees, and super PACs during the 2020 presidential election cycle. This was double the 7 billion distributed in 2016. It is inevitable that total donations in 2024 will be much higher. This money does not support U.S. democracy. On the contrary, this money contributes to the rise of Trumpism and neo-fascism. There is a certain logic to this. As more and more wealth becomes concentrated at the top, moneyed interests logically fear that the Democratic majority will strip that wealth away through higher taxes, tighter regulations, enforcement of anti-monopoly laws, pro-union initiatives, and trade union initiatives, price controls. So they spend more of their wealth than ever on anti-democratic candidates. Donald Trump is going full fascist these days and gaining the support of prominent billionaires. Destroy the American dream. The New York Times reported that he plans to round up millions of undocumented immigrants and detain them in vast camps while they await deportation. Trump has publicly vowed to appoint a special prosecutor to keep tabs on Joe Biden his family and has told advisors friends that he wants the Justice Department investigate officials who criticized his time in office. Who is financing all this? While Trump's base makes small contributions, big money comes from the richest people in United States. In first half of the year, many billionaires joined Trump backed Make America Great Again, Inc., donated to Super PAC. 88-year-old casino and hotel mogul Phil Ruffin has made multiple donations of $1 million. Jared's father and real estate mogul Charles Kushner, who received a late-term pardon from Trump in December 2020, contributed $1 million in June. Trump's former ambassador to the United Kingdom and New York Jets co-owner Robert Woody Johnson donated $1 million to MAGA PAC in April. But Trump isn't the only extremist making big dollars. Nikki Haley, who only seems moderate compared to Trump's blatant neo-fascism, claimed at the campaign launch that Biden supports a socialist agenda. During her two years as UN ambassador under Trump, Haley was a strong advocate of the so-called zero-tolerance policy, in which thousands of immigrant children were separated from their parents and guardians. She supported Trump's decision to withdraw from the UN Human Rights Council and withdraw from the Iran nuclear deal. Although Haley briefly criticized Trump for inciting mob that attacked the US Capitol on Jan 6, 2021, she soon defended Trump and urged Democratic lawmakers to leave Mann alone as they impeached him for a second time. Haley recently told Kristen Welker of NBC's Meet Press that it might have been irresponsible for Trump to float the idea of executing retired Gen. Mark Milley, but that it would be enough to disqualify Trump from running for